Hello guys and welcome to the last video in the kitchen for probably a little while because this is the final styling video and I am so excited about this one. I have been waiting to style this space. Many of you guys know in my previous apartment we did renovations here and there. We did a little bit of paint, a little bit of other things, but there was never full-on customization that we could do, you know? In this place, I was able to paint the cabinetry, we plastered the walls, tiled the floors, did a custom toe kick, window inserts, new lighting, arches. There was a lot that happened in here, and I've been waiting to pull it all together with the styling. And today, I thought it would be fun to do kind of more of a chatty, style with me type of video. So I'm going to be styling the entire kitchen with you guys, going through the coffee bar area here. We are working into the kitchen over here, and then over to the range section as well. Now I actually do have a new oven coming for the kitchen, which I'm very excited about, but it's not coming until the middle of March. So I'll update you guys when that ends up coming. But I think one of the first things I wanna open is a little gift. It's an espresso machine, you guys. I've always wanted an espresso machine. I've never had one. I don't know why. I'm also somebody that loves going to the coffee shop, but I've, now that I have more space, I would love to have the option to make coffee at home. So let's open this because this is kind of going to be our first piece in this coffee bar area and then we can build around that. Well, I've just recently become a coffee girl, so I like like going to Starbucks, but I'm excited to like try and make, and make my own creations at home. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're strong. Got it. Breville, the barista touch. This one is a touch screen, you guys. And this was actually sent over from William Sonoma. So kind. I'm so, so thankful. Um, and I cannot wait to put this here. I cannot wait to also make espresso. Sounds fun. Normally I actually get the shaken brown sugar espresso drink at Starbucks, if you guys know. I love that one. So I'm very excited to shake it up myself. Ah! It fits with the little thing right under. Right under the shelf. How lucky is that? Giving barista and um, coffee shop. I've successfully spent two hours playing with my new espresso machine and I realized I haven't styled any of the kitchen yet. So let's get started. I want to do the coffee bar first. This is our hero of the coffee bar, of course. Something I love doing when I'm styling shelves is kind of starting off with things I 1000% know that I'm going to be putting. Like it is no question and larger items because I like to add in smaller things to kind of fill in the spaces. So I have this large cutting board here and I would love to use this just to kind of break up some of the marble. There's a lot of marble happening here. It's gonna be a nice solid backdrop too for some decor and some elements to add in front of it. To this top shelf here, I added my Olive Atelier mortar and pestle. I love it, it is more so decorative, so I put it a little higher up where I'm not going to actually pull it down, but I think it looks really pretty right here, and there's a few other larger elements that I have. I have this insane vintage candle holder, which is part of the vintage drop, which is happening on Lone Fox on the 12th. If you guys do not know about it, I'm doing a huge curated drop of vintage items over on Lone Fox on the 12th, 10 a.m. PST, and curating things for it for months and months. It's probably gonna be the largest of the drops because it has so many items, you guys. Like, there's a lot. This is one of the pieces that I'm probably gonna honestly keep for myself. And I wanna offset. What I try to do is offset the large. So I have like a large here, a large here, and then I might put like a large item up here as well. I added some glasses here. I moved this over here for the time being because I don't know if I want it next to the glasses, but I do know I want a whole bunch of copper in this area. Copper is another metal. I'm doing mixed metals throughout the entire kitchen. Um, and then I'm gonna add some copper pots over to this section. So let me go grab this. This is actually a candle hurricane that I got at Target a long time ago. It's my favorite glass vase. I love the vase on it. And I'm gonna pop some florals in here just so that we can get some organic movement. I think every space needs a little bit of organic movement and not everything like super structured on shelving. So whenever you can get some randomness, I think that always just enhances the space. I've yet to share with you guys these great plates that I got. I found them at the Melrose Trading Post a couple months back and I've been saving them for this coffee bar. They're handmade by a ceramic artist in LA. 
um, Jim's, I'll put, this is her Instagram. Um, and I'm just gonna pop these plates on the shelf here. I'm not sure if I'm loving this, to be completely honest. Like, I think I might actually wanna bring this into the main kitchen. I might do a different vessel and um, some leaves over here. Ooh, I love that. I just recently got this vase as well. It's so pretty. It's a French confit jar. Maybe some stems like this. I love when the flowers kind of overflow the pot and look more organic, like they're just kind of effortlessly placed in and not too structured. So up here, I actually have one of my Simply Safe cameras. Uh, this is so that if there's any intruders, it's just hidden in the shelving. But I wanna add this nice little jar. Also, from the vintage drop. I kind of like this because I like how the round shape connects back down here and we kind of have this, almost thinking something kind of chunky there, so we create a triangle. I think she can hold her own. She can hold her own up there. She's a little trinket box. Look how pretty the coffee bar looks. This is exactly the styling I wanted to do. I actually ended up adding these little glasses to make espresso martinis. How cute are those? And then of course the plates, the colors in here are just beautiful. I love it so much. So I'm gonna go and work my way around the corner, start styling this part of the kitchen. Not sure if the tulips are the vibe. I don't think that they are, but I do want to add some glassware up here. This shelf is also right by the fridge, so I tend to actually grab my cups off of here when I get water. I also attached the mullions in the window, so those are now added. Something I really am wanting to do is actually almost bring like an element of the outdoors in. Something that I didn't love when I bought this house, which I'll be fully honest with you guys, is that there is absolutely no greenery out of any of my windows, which I don't like. Like I love vines, plants, trees, like any form of greenery, it just gives me instant serotonin boost outside the window. So I kind of want to make the look of greenery without actually having it outside. And I think I'm going to do that with a large uh, styling branch. How cool are these, you guys? These are amber, or they're like actually a dark brown, sorry for the lighting at the moment as well. They're like a dark brown faceted glass and it's beautiful. The bottom is really chunky as well. I got six of these at the flea market. And then I also have a couple of wine glasses. These are just some simple kind of fluted wine glasses, the tallest, which are gonna go against the wall. These are from House of Hackney. I love them. They have like an etching on them. And these are gonna go just kind of right there. So it almost tapers downwards. Um, I'm gonna do a large fruit bowl underneath this main window right here. Something about this area just screams like something lively needs to be under, whether it be like some flowers or some fruit or honestly both because I'm gonna add my branch here as well. Here we have the vessel. This is from Olive Atelier. I got this a while back. And just right there, I love the handle detail on it. I think it's so pretty. And I foraged, foraged for some branches, you guys. Look at those. We have our leaves flowing everywhere. We're gonna kinda tuck them under the shelf so it's still functional, but it's still really organic and pretty. It's more like that. Really, really pretty. And then you can also maneuver them around a little bit. Frame, that is so beautiful. You kind of get the feeling that there's a tree outside almost. And it's kind of peeking through and when the sun comes through, it's gonna illuminate through the leaves and the shadows. I just love this vignette right here. I'm gonna use the cutting board in the corner to hide the outlet. A little something, something. Now right here, you guys can see that the garbage disposal switch is currently silver, or you might not be able to see, but it currently is. I ordered a gold one, it's on the way. But above the sink, I kind of just want to keep it a little structural. I actually have this candle holder. This is from Crate and Barrel and I Swoon. Look at that, it's so pretty. I love kind of the structural silhouette of this as well. It's actually a paper candle holder, but I'm going to put it on here and do nothing with it. So I'm just gonna sit there. These totem candles from the store I think are so fun. It's like a shaped candle. After a solid 45 minutes, also everyone, do know, styling is not a quick process. Everyone that you see on YouTube, honestly, they probably pre-style and then they take everything away and then pretend like you're styling it again. I've done it before too. Styling is trial and error, so it does take a little bit of time. Now, I have these great pillar candle holders. These are vintage. I got them at the flea market, and they're really, really heavy cast iron. 
And then I got these kind of thicker candles. I actually got these at a recent vintage shop for $5 each. But I thought these would be really pretty. Let's see if it lights. Ooh, that's so pretty. I love that. And I'm sure you all know my obsession with the tripod candle base, or anything with the tripod base, to be honest with you. Now, this one needs trimming. Good morning, it is the next day, day two of our little kitchen styling. The sun ended up setting yesterday before I could finish the other part of the kitchen, which is kind of like the range area. I feel like I've already had this like semi-styled throughout because I added the pot rack, of course, which I love. And then these have hooks on them, so you can hook on top of it really anything you'd like. But I realized I have yet to tell you guys what happened with the gas situation in my last video. So let me quickly give you the rundown on that. I removed the oven to put down the flooring, remove the old flooring, and then once that was all done, I brought the oven back in and connected it back up and it started to smell like gas when I turned it on, which you guys saw in the video. Um, but what I actually realized was that the gas was not leaking from any of the connections. So it wasn't actually like the pipes that we connected back. It was leaking from the lever, from the actual valve that you open and close the gas with. It was leaking and that's because the valve that they actually used was meant for a washer and dryer and apparently not fit correctly to the pipe that was over here. It was like a different connection so they had all these weird attachments and essentially the stove now is currently sticking out about four inches I'd say. So here you could see how the oven is sticking out and that is because back here you guys probably will not be able to see it but back here down there uh, there's actually a large pipe like a connector and where they put the gas line literally is like right on the edge of the oven so you can't push it all the way back which is crazy because they basically should have put the gas line more in the center of the wall because there's an, an area like a cutout behind the oven where it allows for all of the gas piping to go. But it is actually just right on the edge here, so we can't push it back all the way. So I'm actually going to have to hire a plumber to come and relocate the gas line more central, which is another lovely thing I didn't know I'd have to do. But let's get to styling this area because it's beautiful. And I cannot wait to see it with all of the little additions and items I've been collecting. I already have my copper pots hanging up here and then these little utensils that are so cute. I love how they have the cast iron with the brass. Again, lots of mixed metals throughout the kitchen. I actually picked this little guy up at a Pasadena antique store. It looks like a weapon almost, but you guys know I'm going for that very kind of gothic, Spanish. I just love mixing elements of iron. I like the harshness of the iron contrasting with kind of like the softness of the marble. I love, this isn't very soft here, but I feel like it's more soft as it goes down. And I love that juxtaposition. I think it looks so pretty. And over on this side, I think I'm gonna do a little hanging towel. I love this blue color. Now, of course, I never actually like this. It's just a display. I keep taking the pieces that are for the vintage drop. This is one of the pieces, but I'm sorry. It's not going to be part of it anymore because I'm going to keep it for myself. <laughs> I just love it. It's so cute. I'm going to use it as a little kitchen crock. It's like a studio pottery vessel. And then I have all of these uh, more so decorative spoons. And then there actually are some ones that we can use. I also love how this kind of hides the outlet, but you can still get to it if you need to. I shared these great little glasses in uh, an antique hall. More studio pottery. I've just been in love with studio pottery. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna put in here, but just as a little catch-all, I love this piece. It's a bust from my online shop, and I thought it could be really nice as kind of like a little statue piece up on the shelf. Uh, and I feel like the curb of the range hood, oh, you guys can't even see. What if we put, what if we do this here, and then we do this? I love, these are resin salt and pepper shakers from the shop. And then and just some little sauce dishes as well. The star of the show, look at this lamp that I got. I got this for such a great deal. It was $599, I didn't pay that. It was $599 on sale for $189 at the antique store. And I was like, you know what, that like $189 for this lamp? It's such a great deal. It's Art Deco. It's such a cool piece. I actually ended up tucking the cord. I just pushed it inside the lamp. So it had a really long cord and I pushed it inside. This lamp is also very interesting because the shade actually just comes completely off and it just sits on top of 
um, these little arms. So it's actually not attached um, at the top, which you kind of think it would be. It's not necessary in the kitchen. I just think it's a nice little addition. I always love a lamp in the kitchen. I think it's really charming. I do have to do a little art in here. I ended up doing just a small art piece over on this wall. So I thought just kind of diagonal from it would be nice to do this absolutely unreal antique oil still life. It is honestly, guys, like one of the most beautiful paintings I've ever seen. I found this also at a Pasadena antique market. It was $60. This is the most perfectly distressed old oil painting, if that makes sense. So I'm using command hooks on this wall too because we plastered it. So I don't really want to use nails if I don't have to, but... The kitchen is done. We have our first finished space in the house and I cannot wait to share this with you guys. I feel like I have not done reveal clips in so long, like probably like eight months, a year. I have not revealed a space in such a long time. I cannot believe I'm getting ready to film these clips. Like these are my favorite clips, you guys. So here is my brand new kitchen.